we had a crazy thing happen with a Christmas tree this year. Well, it was sitting in its jug of water all winter because we chopped this down, we, we murdered this tree. It started to grow new little spruce tips and uh, waste not, want not, spruce tips are really delicious and we don't actually have any evergreens to go foraging on our property. So before I get this Christmas tree out of our house, I'm gonna be picking all the spruce tips and collecting them so that I can make a spruce tip gin with them because I made that in the past and it was really good. Some of these tips that started growing are actually fattening up, like this one here, and they're turning into pine cones. It's it's really funny to see what this tree is doing. I've, I've never seen a Christmas tree do this before. I really like the flavor of spruce tips. They have almost a, a lemony type flavor to it. They don't taste overwhelmingly uh, like like a forest. <laughs> they, they actually have this nice sharp um, lemon. They're, it's really hard to explain what they taste like. It's Canadian citrus. Yeah, Canadian citrus. There you go. Um, they, one way that I've used them in the past is I've frozen them and I've added them into smoothies that I've made for the kids. Um, I've also seen people dry them and use them in tea and I imagine that would give like a really nice like depth to a herbal tea. But as I said, these are getting turned into a gin and our absolutely favorite thing that we've ever done with them is we soaked them in a gin and then we made gin and tonics with it and it had this amazing flavor. You know, gin already has some of those botanical notes but then when you added in the, you know, the citrusy pine of the spruce tips, it was really good. <laughs> so we're excited to get another one of these stocked into the, into the liquor cabinet. There's a squirrel in our tree. <laughs> Good thing it's not a real squirrel. <laughs> Picking them is really easy if you're going out to forage them. You want to get them when they're small and still quite tight. If they start to get big, like, you know, even this is, is starting to get a little bit big, I'm still going to pick it. But um, they're better when, when they're small and tender and tightly clumped together and they just come off. Like, on this tree especially, they're just almost falling <laughs> off because, you know, the tree's sad, it's dead. But uh, just really easy to just pluck them. It, you know, almost like a berry for the amount of pressure that you have to put on them. The time to forage for the spruce tips is in the early spring. That's when the trees start to put on their first growth. Um, you know, having this tree inside in the heat, getting all the moisture of you know, how we've been watering it to keep the tree from dropping all its needles. That's kind of imitating what early spring would be like outside. So that is my guess as to why it's it's pushing out the tips. Um, but for us here in Canada, usually like March would be when I go out to forage for the spruce tips. But you know, we're zone five. So, you know, all relative to what's going on in your area. But you know, if, you, if you've never tried this, you've never tried the spruce tips, but you do have some evergreens in your area, it is, they're really tasty and, and they're definitely worth a try. It took me a few years after hearing about them before I went and foraged them for the first time. And as soon as I picked them, I was kicking myself because I enjoyed eating them so much. <laughs> just for clarification, uh, it's uh, just the tip, <laughs> right? Yes, just, just the nice, tender, fresh, light green tips. Perfect. <laughs> I think I'm also gonna take some of these like branch branch tips that have lots of the needles on them and I might try to infuse an olive oil with the with the evergreen and yeah. try to make like a slightly scented like evergreen oil for making a soap in the spring. Waste not, want not, and then we'll throw it on the wood chip pile and compost it. The circle of life. <laughs> okay, people don't want to hear from you anymore. You're not the real star of the show. <laughs> Let's wake the cat up. 
Hey, bud, we're going to wake you up. Mickey, Mickey. So I finished picking all the tips and I got a pretty good harvest. You know, this is this is a pretty good forage for the living room. <laughs> and then I also cut off some of the tender little tips and I'm gonna actually infuse oil with this little bit of evergreen to make a nice smelling oil. It smells really good when I was cutting them up. And then we're gonna check this tree outside. But I will show you the next step that I do to make the gin in the kitchen. Okay, don't do that. So this recipe is super simple. All you do is you cover the spruce tips with the gin. You want to make sure that it's covered. You know, they're floating up a little bit here, but once they settle down a bit, they'll be covered. You don't want them really sticking up because I guess that's almost done. Because if you do, then they can maybe start to go bad, but the alcohol will actually kind of act as a preservative. So you don't have to really worry about anything bad happening with this. And then what I usually do is I keep this out somewhere, you know, like on the kitchen counter for a week and I shake it a little bit until it starts to settle down. And then I just, I put it onto a shelf in a dark place and you want to let it infuse the flavor for at least a month um, but if you leave it longer it just gets more more flavor into it and then when it's at the stage that you like you strain it out and you have a really good tasting tasting you know liqueur basically so if you also had a Christmas tree start to grow tips, which you probably didn't because it's super weird that I did that. <laughs> Here's something you can do with it. And if not, uh, consider trying to do some spruce tip harvesting in the coming spring because they are a, a really tasty little snack. I'll see you guys next time. How do they taste? Thank you.